This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled The House on the Hill. And we promise you a thrilling story, and you'll meet some very strange characters. Our first act will begin in just a moment after this very important message. The United States Army, the senior service, needs capable young men with ambition who want to continue their education. If you fill the bill, the Army will send you to one of its fine technical schools to study radio, radar, meteorology, or mechanics. You will not only get the finest training in the world, but you will have the special pride that goes with wearing the uniform of the United States Army, the mark of a man. You will find there are plenty of chances to get ahead, for your army is growing fast, and keen young men can grow with it. Why not get all the facts about what the army has to offer you? Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with the recruiting sergeant and learn more about your United States Army. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Mark Jason, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The House on the Hill. There are people still living in Galensburg who remember that summer. It was one of the hottest on record. But heat or no heat, it would have been remembered for other reasons, reasons dark and ugly, buried now under more than 50 years of time. You might say it began on a scorching afternoon in August at the turn of the century. Uh, how much farther? Another mile. When we get up around that bend there, you'll be able to see the place. Great big ugly barn sitting on a hill looking down at the rest of the world. They own the whole town? Named after them. When Tom Galen was alive, it was different. Much different. I was just a young sprout, but I remember him. Handsome fella. Tall, liked everybody. Everybody liked him. Nothing stuck up or highfalutin'. He ran the plant then. Folks still talk about those times. They were mighty good. Mighty good. And then he married that woman... You got business with her? Well, no, not exactly. Why? You'll see. How how did Tom Galen die? Drowned in the lake, or so they say. He loved the water, had a little sailboat. Around sunset one night, he went out. Nobody saw him go. A big storm came up, and later they found the boat. And they never found him. How do you know? I, I just thought that's what you meant. Did. Dragged the lake for days. And that way faced woman of his sitting up there. Did they have any children? Three boys. Some tell you four. Oh, I, I, I don't follow you. Look up there. Oh. Yeah, you were right. Did Tom Galen build that place? Build it for her, just before he died. <sighs> what a monstrosity. Lives up there like a queen with those spoiled, weak jawed brats of hers. Hope you ain't a relative. No, no, nothing like that. Only good one of the bunch was Dick, just like his father. She couldn't break him. He left about five years ago. Somebody said once they heard he joined the army and went to fight in Cuba. You plan to stay with him for long? No, no, I hardly think so. Hey, you want to wait and give me a ride back to town? They got one of them telephones up there. You, you call the hotel when you want me. I don't want to wait. Place gives me the creeps. Makes me feel bad. Yeah, great. It's ugly enough. Look, I don't feel like walking back to town on a scorcher like this. I'll pay you double if you'll wait. Sorry, mister. 
You call the hotel. Yeah, you know something else? What? We're going to have a storm. Ding buster. Haven't had one more in two months. How can you tell that? Huh? I know, all right. You wait and see. There's a train leaving at 10 tonight. Let's say if I don't call you, you pick me up at 9, huh? Uh, like to, but you better call first. If I'm busy, Mr. Chubb can bring you down. Who's Mr. Chubb? A servant? I don't know who he is or what he is. He lives there with him. Came a week or two before Tom Galen drowned. Never left. He does what she tells him. Hey, how do you know all this? I know, mister. I ain't told you half of what I know. I think. Whoa, oh, Nelly. Ho, oh, oh, up there now. Oh. Ho. Well, hey, what are you stopping for? As far as I go. As far as you go? Now, look here. I paid you to bring me to the Galen house. There's still a good quarter of a mile to go. Well, you see that gate there, mister? That's where Galen property begins, and that's as far as I go. You just walk down that drive. Won't take you long. Yeah, but why? I ain't asked you your business. Don't ask me mine. Oh, I beg your pardon, miss. Who are you? What do you want? I didn't mean to startle you. I, I was on my way to the house there. You you wish to see someone? That's right, Mrs. Galen. You're not Mrs. Galen. <laughs> Who, me? No, I, I'm Emily Merriman, Mrs. Galen's companion. Companion? Yes, I, I look after her, read to her, write her letters, that sort of thing. Oh. Well, uh, well, then you could introduce me to her. I don't know your name, sir, or my, what you want. My name is Mark Jason. You want uh, something, mister? Mr. Chubb, must you always be popping up out of nowhere? Who is he? This is Mr. Jason, and he's here to see Mrs. Galen on, on, on business. What business? How did he get here? Well, I got a ride in the carriage to your gate back there. The driver wouldn't come any further. I'm beginning to see why. You must forgive Mr. Chubb. He... What do you want with Mrs. Galen? Whatever I want, I'm sure it's no concern of yours. You're wrong. Mrs. Galen doesn't want to be disturbed. You can write her and make an appointment. You can go to the devil. I've gone a long way out of my way to see Mrs. Galen. It's a very hot day, and I'm getting sick and tired Mr. of all Mr. Jason, this... please, it's, it's just that Mr. Chubb is suspicious of strangers. He... Well, why? What's he afraid of? You better get moving, mister, or I'll help you. Stop it. I'll be responsible for Mr. Jason. Now, please leave us alone, Mr. Chubb. Go back to the house. Just go away. Yeah, see what Mrs. Galen has to say about this. Whew. Oh, what a charming fellow. What's he do, haunt the house? I, I don't know what he does. He, he's been here for many years. I'm sorry he was so rude. What is it you want, Mr. Jason? You see, I... Well, I knew Richard Galen. He was a friend of mine. Richard? You mean that... Oh, did you know him? No, I never met him. But I've heard them speak of him. Where is he? He... He's dead, Miss Merriman. He died in Cuba at San Juan Hill. You see, we were in the army together. He's dead? And they don't know, but I thought Well, he are... used a different name. They knew he was in the army because he wrote a letter just before he went in. Mrs. Galen told me that. The night before he died, he told me his real name and a little about his family. He made me promise I'd keep it a secret no matter what happened. I was passing through, and I thought the least I could do would be to, well, stop and tell Mrs. Galen about Dick. It's very kind of you. I imagine it'll come as a bad shock to her. M Mrs. Galen... Well, she isn't like most women. She's she's very bitter about Richard. She never forgave him for running away. Come along, Mr. Jason. So I guess that's about all there is to tell, Mrs. Galen. I, I'm very sorry to be the bearer of such news. So Richard is dead. Well, it serves him right. He was a spoiled and willful boy. He had no love for any of us. What's that I heard you saying about Dickie, Mother? He's dead. Dead? Well, what do you know about that? Poor Dick. How? He was killed in Cuba fighting. This man, Mr. Mason, was with him. Mr. Jason. This is my son, Harold. He knows enough to stay home and behave himself. How do you do? Beastly hot, isn't it? I could use a drink. Do you have a way back to town, Mr. Jason? The man who brought me up here said you had a telephone. I can call a carriage. Telephone's broken. Can't get anything on it but a buzz. I hardly think it's worth keeping, Mother. 
It's only two miles back to town, Mr. Jason. If you start now, we should get there before the storm. Well, <laughs> don't you have anyone who can take me back? I don't want to miss my train. I can't spare Mr. Chubb. If Harold cares to take you, he may. Oh, come, Mother. You know how tired I am. Where's Lester? He went over to the Maylands after lunch, said he'd probably stay for dinner. Stay for dinner? How dare he do that without telling me? Mrs. Galen, I could drive Mr. Jason back to town. You could do no such thing. You're never around when I want you, young lady. Well, thank you for the offer anyway, Miss <laughs> Merriman. <laughs> thank you for the offer, Miss Merriman. He's no fool, a gentleman. I suppose you think me a cruel and heartless woman, Mr. Jason. Well... <laughs> It's of little consequence what I think, Mrs. Gill, and I did what I thought would be a service. Would you have felt any better had I burst into tears? Whatever your feelings are, you have to live with them. Indeed. What time did you say your train left? I didn't say, Mrs. Gill, and it leaves at 10 o'clock. So I'll <laughs> bid you good day. <laughs> Isn't he the one? You don't phase him a bit, Mother. Be still. If you would care to stay and have supper with us, you may. After that, Harold can drive you back to town. I don't wish to intrude. Since you already have, we might as well make the best of it. Uh, Mother, I'm not going to drive if there's a storm and there's going to be one. You will do as I say. It's been a long time since we've had anyone stay to dinner. You've been honored, Mr. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. Hey, what in the world are you doing in a place like this? What do you mean? Well, the first thing I noticed about you was the fear in your eyes. You were standing to the path watching this house as though you wanted to run for your life but couldn't. Now I see why. That woman isn't normal. And Harold. And if the other one's like him, I don't believe that Dick was from the same family. He's worse. Much worse. Well, he... Why do you stay here? This whole place has an atmosphere of something evil. You can almost smell it. In this house. Look at it. Look at the way it stands. Its windows gaping at... What is it? What's the matter? Look. There... There are bars on those windows up there. Why is that? I don't know. You don't know? What's up there? I don't know. No one is ever allowed to go above the second floor. Mr. Chubb lives up there. Hmm. The driver said four. Four? For what? Listen, the only reason I'm still here is because of you. Now, I, I know that sounds impertinent. I've only known you since I came up on you an hour or so ago, but I want to help you. Well, that's very kind of you, but there's Do you no... like living here? I hate it. Do you have any affection for that woman? No, no, well, I... Why do you stay here? I'm... I'm afraid. I know that. But of what? I can't explain it. She's, she's never said anything right out, but I have a feeling that I'm a prisoner here. And if I tried to leave, something might happen. Oh, I know that sounds ridiculous, but after you live in a place like this for a while, you, you find that your thoughts are yes, crazy. Yes, yes, I can imagine. I, I was hoping you'd stay at least for... <gasps> what, what is it? What's the matter? Up there in that window, what? the narrow one. When the lightning flashed, I thought I saw a face. What? It didn't look human. Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Mark Jason in the proudly we hail production, The House on the Hill, will return in just a moment for the second act. Your growing United States Army needs qualified young officers, and a brand new regulation says you can apply for OCS, Officer Candidate School, before you enlist. You must be at least 19 years old and able to pass the mental and physical exams for Army officers. A high school diploma is your best qualification. You'll be taught many interesting subjects, and it'll be a great day when you line up for your commission. You'll be proud to be an officer in the United States Army with good pay and allowances for quarters and food. This is a great opportunity for young men, and you should take advantage of it now. If you think you can make the grade, get all the details at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. 
And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Mark Jason, we present the second act of The House on the Hill. Brother Dickie, we're heroes together, huh? Ah, poor Dickie. Never liked us, me or less, or mother. You know, one time Chubb caught him trying Harold, to get it. Be still, keep your tongue buttoned up. Oh. Mr. Jason's not interested in our family problems. Oh, you're wrong, Mrs. Galen. You see, I've never met a family quite like yours. You don't say. In what respect? I thought a great deal of your son. Emily, eat your dinner. You sit there and peck at your food like a sparrow. Mother, I'm not driving any carriage in this train or no train. I'm a, a... Did, did someone call? I heard nothing. Well, I heard someone shout. It seemed to come from above. It was the thunder. Marie, you may clear the table. And tell Felix to get the carriage ready. Mr. Jason will be wanting to leave at once. Now, Mother, you can't expect... Mr. Chubb me... will drive. He doesn't mind the rain. Miss Merriman... Was there something you wanted to tell Mrs. Galen? I, to I, tell me? What have you got to tell me, Emily? I, I'm leaving, Mrs. Galen. Tonight. I'd like the money you owe me. I haven't been paid since I came here. Oh, you ungrateful little wretch. How dare you? You're leaving. You'd like the money? Go to your room at once. In the morning, you can apologize. <laughs> the little sparrow doesn't like it here either. <laughs> I'm leaving, Mrs. Galen. You can't make me stay. You will stay as long as I will have you. No, I, I think not, Mrs. Galen. Miss Merriman has told me that she'd like to go back to her folks. I intend to see that she gets there. Oh, so, a conspiracy behind my back. You think you know something, and now you want to leave. Is that it, you snooping slut? Is it, is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Harold, tell Mr. Chubb I would like to see him. Call to him from the second floor. No, not now. Do not, as but... I say. Miss Merriman, is your bag packed? Yes. I think you'd better get it. Neither of you will leave here in any carriage of mine, and you, you deceitful troll, you're not leaving tonight at all. Listen, Chuck. Chuck! Mother wants a word with you, Chuck! Please, Mr. Jason, you'd better leave now. Before he comes, you'll sick him on you like a dog. Now, don't be frightened. I'll meet you in the hall. Go on, go on now. <laughs> Emily! Emily, you stay right where you are. Emily, come back here. How dare you? Calm yourself. Calm yourself, Mrs. Galen. After Mr. Chubb is done with you, you can crawl back to town. Mr. Chubb! Mr. Chubb, come down here at once! Harold! Why does the Want him so badly, Mother, you go get him. He's having another one of his spells. God, listen, income poop. Where are you going, Mr. Jason? To help Miss Merriman with her bag. Mr. Chubb! Well, I'm afraid we'll have to wait till it lets up a bit. Why, well, what is it? The servants. They've gone. Gone? I but, heard them but... tell Mrs. Galen the next time Mr. Chubb had one of his spells, they'd leave. Oh. Does he, uh, does he have them often? This, this is the second since I've been here. It's horrible, horrible. Easy, easy now. <laughs> but nobody's going to hurt you, Emily. But they took the carriage. I saw them, saw them from the window when the lightning flashed. Well, is there only one? Lester took the other. Where is she now? Well, I left her in the hall about ready to froth at the mouth. Look, I'll tell you what. And there's no need for us to go down there and listen to her rave. Suppose we stay here in your room until the storm lets up. And then we can walk back to town. I suppose I should be shocked at having you in my room at all. Somehow I'm not. I'd feel even feel safer if you'd lock the door. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll really give her something to scream about. I'm... I can never thank you for what you've done. Never. <laughs> you know, it won't be much fun walking. The road will be a mess after this. Oh, I won't mind. I don't care what it's like or how far it is. 
Just so I can feel safe again. Just so I'm not always afraid and... I'm never sure what I'm afraid of. Oh, no, you can start getting over that right now. By telling me about yourself. About... about before you came here. Good Lord. Please, please don't go out there. No, I've got this poker. I'll be all right. No, no, no. Stay in there. No, I won't be left alone. What is it? What's happened? Oh. I don't go up there at once. Oh. Oh, for the love of... It... It's Chubb. Or what's left of him. Look! Look there on the stairs! Emily, run. Run. Mrs. Galen, whoever or whatever you've been keeping up there is loose. Oh, no. No, that can't be. Mr. Chubb! Mr. Chubb! Look, what's left of Mr. Chubb is on the landing. Oh, no! I'm getting out of here. Why don't you come back? <laughs> Mrs. Galen, is there some place we can go until... It until... can't be for 25 years. Who is, is it? A... Who have you had up there? Look, look, that smoke. Oh. My God, he set the place on fire. Set my house on fire. How dare he set my house on fire? Thomas, Thomas, now you go back where look. you belong. Grab her arm, Emily. Uh, Grab it. Hold it tight. We'd have to get out of here. This place is going up like a tinderbox. Look, we get back to the stables. Now, come along, Mrs. Galen. Take your hands off me. I'll decide where I want to Whoever you are, we don't mean to harm you. Open that door, Emily. Now take my hand and hold on. Keep your head down. Will he come out here? I don't know, but... Mad as he is, I shouldn't think he'd stay in there and burn up. But if he comes... Oh, wait a minute, you go back with Mrs. Gale. No, no. I'll stand here by the door. With the light from the fire, I'll see him soon enough. And to think that he was there all the time. Yes, yeah, soon enough. He Poor hardly devil. looks like a man. Stop it. Stop it. Get hold of yourself, Emily. I know this whole thing has been a horrible nightmare. You'll do no good by having hysterics. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to let myself no, go. No, of course. Of course you didn't. No. I don't know how you managed to hold up for so long, but just try to hang on a little longer, huh? Yes. This storm will soon be over. What, what do you suppose happened to Harold? Well, if he maintains the speed he left at, he should be in town by now. Thomas! Thomas, don't touch me! No! You, put her down! Put her down! Thomas! Thomas, put me down! Mark, are you all right? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. Lord, he's a powerful brute. Here. Here, help me out. You, you can't do anything no, now. Don't tell me what I can do, girl. You, you wait here. Hmm? Did you see? Yes. Yes, he carried her back into that house. Please tell me what you found out. Well, Emily, they couldn't tell much. See, neither Harold nor Lester were ever aware that there was someone else living in the house. Whenever they heard anything, they thought it was Chubb. Well, they, they grew up with it. They got used to it. You see, Dick never did. He knew something wasn't right. That was one reason he left. Although he didn't say too much about it that last night in Cuba. It's incredible. I lived there for almost a year, and I never knew. I knew something was wrong, but that was a, a feeling and nothing else. Eh? Where she found that Chubb, no one will ever know. But it was their secret together, and they certainly kept it very well. Mark, do they know who it was for sure? You know who it was. 
Just as well as I do. Well, was there any proof? We saw the proof. But, but why did she do it? Well, I guess the easiest way out of that is to say that she was mad to begin with. I don't know why she did it. Maybe she hated him because she couldn't break him or because everyone liked him. Well, who knows? But her own husband, yeah. I... But 25 years, she kept her own husband a prisoner in his own house. Yeah. With the help of Chubb turned him into a raving maniac. Oh. Well, it's horrible. It's tragic. <laughs> but look here. You know, I think it's time we talk of other things. <laughs> Like Emily Merriman and Mark Jason, huh? Well, I think that would be nice. Why don't you start? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Although I should say ladies first. <laughs> so once upon a time, there was a man named Mark Jason who was on his way to Colorado. And on his way there, he met a very pretty girl. Star Conrad Nagel will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. The United States Army, the senior service, needs capable young men with ambition who want to continue their education. If you fill the bill, the Army will send you to one of its fine technical schools to study radio, radar, meteorology, or mechanics. You will not only get the finest training in the world, but you will have the special pride that goes with wearing the uniform of the United States Army, the mark of a man. You will find there are plenty of chances to get ahead, for your army is growing fast, and keen young men can grow with it. Why not get all the facts about what the army has to offer you? Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with the recruiting sergeant and learn more about your United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. Supporting Mr. Nagel in the role of Emily Merriman was Helen Christen. The House on the Hill was written by DeWitt Cop. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Well, friends, we hope you join us next week for Proudly We Hail and come with us to Scotland for a light comedy entitled Highland Fling, a program which we're sure you'll enjoy. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.